All right, we're at the top of the hour, so we're going to get started. I'd like to welcome everyone, and I hope you're all having a good day so far. The focus of this presentation is on improving energy sector resilience with geocells and ground protection maps. I'm your host, Corey Schneider, Business Development Manager with Presto Geosystems. We're located in Wisconsin and manufacture erosion control, stormwater management, and porous pavement products that are used all over the US and the world. I have everyone muted now, so if you have questions during the presentation, please type them in the question window and I will answer them at the end. Today's presentation will cover geocell development and how geocells are used, specifically in the energy sector, and how they help with touch and step hazards. We will also discuss geoterra construction mats, both permanent and temporary applications, and highlight some successful GeoWeb and GeoTerra projects in the energy industry. As mentioned, if you have questions, please type them in the question window and I will answer them after the presentation. First, a little background on Presto. We work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to develop geocell technology in the late 1970s and have been innovating ever since. Our products have been used in over 200 countries and in every state in the U.S. We go beyond simply providing a product. Um, if you go to our website, which is prestogeo.com, you'll find a lot of design and construction resources available there. Uh, we also have experienced engineers on staff who provide free project evaluations for any time that you are considering using GeoCell in your project. And then um, if we do go ahead and use GeoCells, Presto or a local distributor will be on site to make sure that the contractor is not only installing the material correctly, but also as efficiently as possible. And everything that we do is with an eye toward providing a complete solution for your project. We operate in three product areas, our GeoWeb GeoCells, which can be used for load support, slope and channel protection, and constructing green retaining walls. We also have a line of porous pavements, both vegetated and aggregate solutions, as well as lightweight reusable construction mats. We're going to cover a few areas today, focusing on the GeoWeb system and different applications and talking about the reusable construction maps. As I mentioned, we worked with the Army Corps of Engineers to develop this type of system. The initial iteration used wax paper in order to be water resistant, but that wasn't strong enough. Then it was made of aluminum, which had the strength, but was difficult to ship and install. Finally, high-density polyethylene, or HDPE, was the chosen material due to its lightweight, flexible nature and the fact that it is inert to nearly all chemicals and climate conditions. We'll now get into a little general information about the GeoWeb GeoCells. Made from high, highly stable inert materials, GeoWeb GeoCells are your permanent stabilization solution and will not, will not degrade, leach, or release microplastics into the environment. GeoWeb is manufactured with premium high-density polyethylene resin with no fillers, polymer alloys, or other similar fillers. Our base resin is the same material used in environmental applications, such as geomembranes and other environmental barriers to protect against the spread of harmful toxins. And our products have been third-party tested by accredited geosynthetics laboratories, confirming long-term stability against environmental factors such as weathering and oxidation. GeoWeb is lab tested to be durable for a minimum of 100 years in natural soil based on analysis in accordance with ISO 1343-8 and when subjected to UV radiation and accelerated weathering conditions in accordance with 12.224. GeoWeb specimens retained 100% of their <clears throat> original tensile strength 
with no loss in mass or change in visual appearance. Additionally, GeoWeb and all of our other products and accessories are 100% made in the USA. In order for a GeoCell system to perform uniformly, it is critical that both the factory welded junctions or internal junctions and field joined junctions that connect in individual panels or mechanical junctions perform at a level, level that is commensurate with that of the cell walls. Therefore, an incremental improvement in one characteristic is only val valuable if a complementary improvement has been made in the other components of the system. GeoWeb is manufactured using a proprietary blend of high quality virgin HDPE, or proprietary formulation has stood the test of time for more than 40 years and contains no fillers, unstable polymer combinations, or exotic polymer alloys. For most typical sites, GeoWeb will retain its durability for more than 100 years with lab testing indicated, indicating 149 years without degradation, even at full exposure to the elements. We stand behind our numbers so you can deliver certainty in the solution as you build with materials you can trust. The GeoWeb system is our version of GeoCell technology and consists of two main attributes. The first is the cell or container size. The cells come in three diameters, 20V, 30V, and 40V, which are our small, medium, and large openings, with cell heights of 3, 4, 6, 8, and 12 inches available for each diameter. Proper combination of cell size and cell depth depends on the project details, and we can help you determine which one is the most appropriate for a specific application. There are also five section lengths to best fit your project needs. The ultrasonically welded seam where all of the connecting points are is very important to the function of a geocell. The stronger the seam strength, the better the performance of the geocell will be. A strong seam allows for heavier infill material, steeper and taller slopes, and better lifetime performance. GeoWeb is produced using high quality virgin high density polyethylene resin for consistently strong welds at cell junctions, while also maintaining semi rigid ductile properties within the cell walls, including high stress crack resistance and overall toughness and long term durability in the environment. Our geocells do not use fillers or exotic polymer alloy blends, which can ultimately reduce weld strength and environmental stress crack resistance, and that are offered in some computing, competing products in the name of increasing cell wall stiffness. To avoid weld failures and the damaging effects of differential settlement, uniformity and performance across all elements of a geocell system is much more important than stiffness alone. Here you can see a typical GeoWeb panel. It comes tri-folded, banded, and palletized. Each section has a nominal width of eight and a half feet with lengths between 12 and 58 feet. The panels are flexible, opening like an accordion so they can follow the natural contours of the work site without being confined to a rigid set of dimensions. The sections it can also be easily cut in the field to fit project dimensions and or go around any obstructions such as trees, manholes, and guardrails. The second main attribute of the GeoWeb system is the infill. An important benefit of the GeoWeb system is that even a low quality aggregate such as sand or certain salvage materials can be used to infill the cells. Using salvage aggregate or sand can save significant amount of money on material and hauling costs. We also can eliminate fines when desired since the cells provide the confinement and aid in compaction of cohesionless soils. Without fines, you can significantly improve drainage and let the water flow freely through the system, preventing core pressure buildup and global failure of the cross section. The ability to use sands and low quality aggregates really sets the three-dimensional GeoWeb system apart from planar, planar geogrids and geotextiles. 
Those products require high quality materials with very high friction angles to achieve optimal performance. With the GeoWeb system, low friction angle materials are just fine. The GeoWeb panels achieve their full potential even with these poor materials, which can offer a large cost savings. <clears throat> Presto's GeoWeb system is equipped with numerous design and construction components that increase strength and speed of installation. When using stake anchorage, we can provide a simple cap for a standard number four rebar or fiberglass or plastic anchors when necessary. The Atra key is used to connect sections together, both side to side and end to end, creating one fully integrated uniform system, no matter how many sections are connected together. It allows for faster installation of the GeoWeb and will last the lifetime of the project, ensuring that the covered area is protected and that the GeoWeb system will not fail under anticipated stresses. Specific engineering values of the Atra key will ensure the system holds up to loading over time without the corrosion seen in staples or the failure of underperforming cable tie systems. Connection methods recommended by our competitors. Our spec sheet calls out the specific, specific engineering values for this patented connector. For steep slopes, slopes where the native soil is highly erodible or over a surface that cannot be punctured, such as a liner, tendons can be used. The Atra tendon clip transfers the load from heavy infill material to the tendons and crest anchorage system. Only the Atra tendon clip is specifically designed to fully transfer safely and securely the forces placed upon the geocell. Every accessory and every feature has been designed and tested to specifically work together so that we have we go from problem to design to construction solution with a system where the modeling replicates the real world forces. Now that we've got some background on geocells in general, we'll turn toward the energy sector specifically. The first thing we'll cover is how the GeoWeb system works at the surface to create a stabilized unpaved road. An aggregate surface has advantages in saving pavement costs and with the GeoWeb system filled with open graded base course, you can design a system that allows stormwater infiltration and provides stormwater storage. The purpose of cellular confinement is very simple, stabilize the movement of unstable soils, both vertically and horizontally. The weaker the subgrade conditions, the more practical the insertion of the GeoWeb system is into the design. There are many great benefits to using the GeoWeb system, but the one I really want to highlight for you is that the system allows for the use of sand, low quality aggregate, or on-site salvage materials so you don't have to truck in expensive engineered stone, Many times you can use what is on site to save on cost and installation time. This is a big benefit over other geosynthetics, again, like grids, which require specific gradations of high quality stone. Additionally, by controlling differential settlement, GeoWeb can greatly reduce or even eliminate rutting, helping to control maintenance costs. On the construction end, a GeoWeb can be installed in any weather conditions and allows for immediate access, unlike when chemical stabilization is used. And it can also reduce your overall cross section by 70% compared to non reinforced sections. The GeoWeb system is suitable for use in extremely soft subgrade conditions. In fact, the worse the subgrade is, the more sense GeoWeb makes. Here you can see the impressive load support benefits of an 80,000 pound loaded dump truck on a partially filled GeoWeb panel over a soft subgrade. You can see how the cells push back against each other to support the load and that only the adjacent cell needs to be filled for support. A great benefit to using the GeoWeb system is that you don't need to have every cell completely filled before the road is usable. You can reduce construction time and materials with this approach, a significant benefit of using the GeoWeb. 
The system works this way. When a vertical load is applied, the active earth pressure in the loaded cell pushes back against the passive earth pressure in the adjacent cell to form a stable system. Each cell helps support the ones around it. The GeoWeb cell walls also transfer hoop stress, which is important in keeping the system intact and creates a mattress effect. The strength of the seams around each cell, the material properties of the individual strips, and the connection method between panels are all important factors in determining how the GeoCell system can improve load bearing capacity. Strong seams, semi-ductal resin properties, and integrated connections are critical to a well-performing system. The GeoWeb and accessories are specifically designed to work together to be an effective solution for roads in soft soil locations. Here you can see the stresses on the subgrade with the unsupported subgrade on the left and GeoWeb reinforcement on the right. Notice how, is there, how there is a complete elimination of the highest stresses at the surface using GeoWeb reinforcement. The stresses are reduced and distributed over a wider area which is known as the mattress effect. This helps to uh, reduce stresses reaching the subgrade and leads to a significant decrease in deflection and rotting. By eliminating lateral particle movement, the GeoWeb system can stabilize the surface, eliminating the need for constant maintenance. Now we'll look at a few project profiles, specifically load support applications in the energy sector. This project was for the Wheatstone Liquid Natural Gas Facility in Australia. The equipment was brought in by ship, assembled, and then moved 10 miles inland to the facility. The vehicle used to move the equipment was huge, as you can see here, so the roadway had to be built strong enough to handle the load without rutting or settling. The high number of passes was also a concern, as the heavy loads would cause some serious damage to pavement over time. We worked with the project engineer to provide a solution, a solution with an aggregate surface roadway that would withstand the vehicle stresses and that could be built quickly in a remote environment. This solution used two layers of GeoWeb, which is rare, with the top layer intended to absorb stress and help evenly distribute the loads and the bottom layer in place to aid in compaction and reduce settlement. This is a good photo of the construction sequence for this road from the port in the upper right heading to the LNG facility in the lower left. The geotextile, which is the white, goes down first on the native subgrade. Then the geoweb panels are installed. The empty panels are black, and then you can see the native on-site material being used for the infill material. Being able to use the excavated material was a Huge bonus to the GeoWeb system here, since it would have been very difficult to get the re required amount of engineered stone out to this remote location. Here we have a project that allowed for access to oil resources in Western Canada over undeveloped soft spongy subgrades. You can see that readily available sand infill was used, again, making expensive aggregate not needed to be transported in. In most cases, the system can also reduce the depth of the cross section by 70% or more. Here we reduce the original section of 40 inches of imported aggregate to an eight inch section, which consisted of an enhanced woven geotextile, six inch geoweb filled with on-site sand, and then two, in two inches of imported aggregate for the wearing surface. This was a project for Duke Energy in Florida to install new transmission towers through wetlands. The high winds of Hurricane Michael demolished over 100 towers, all of which had to be restored over this extremely wet subgrade. In this case, an enhanced woven geotextile was placed over the subgrade. Then the GeoWeb material and sand fill were placed, creating access and maintenance roads, as well as pads around the towers. 2 million square feet of GeoWeb panels were used with the system acting as both the construction access and the long-term maintenance road. 
You can see here the natural subgrade through this location. The water table is at the surface and boot prints are more than an inch deep, which means the sand here is extremely soft and definitely can't support trucks or construction equipment. The geotextile used on this project was Mirafi's RS580i, which has a tensile strength over 5,000 pounds per foot. Not only is it extremely strong, but the fabric also has wicking capabilities, quickly moving water out of the pavement section. The GeoWeb system works well with pretty much all other geosynthetics to create the best solution for a given project site, depending on loading requirements, drainage issues, or any other concerns there may be. Here we are at mid-installation. You can see the empty GeoWeb panels in the background of the photo. During construction, the contractor can use the GeoWeb road as soon as it is filled in. Pretty useful when you are trying to minimize the impact of construction on the surrounding environment. Here's another energy project in Florida, again through very wet, soft soils. In some locations, there were actual low water crossings where water would be slowly flowing over the top of the road. Not a problem when using the GeoWeb system. Given site hydraulic conditions, we can even recommend the required stone size to prevent long-term wash, washout, which we'll discuss more a little bit later. Because it was important to not in, interrupt potential water flow through this wetland area, a high-quality open-graded aggregate was used. The GeoWeb panels themselves don't impede water flow since they are so open, so there is minimal disturbance to the environment, which is sometimes required by local regulations. Here's the completed access road. It's perfectly fine to see the top of the GeoWeb panels in roads like this. The system is fully functioning and you aren't going to damage the panels as long as they remain full. This substation access road in Louisiana was originally designed with geogrid reinforcement, but due to low CBR or California bearing ratio values, it was switched to GeoWeb with sand infill. Notice how easily curves are created. Orientation of the GeoWeb, whether it's expanded across the width or down the length of the roadway, has no bearing on its effectiveness. Whichever direction makes sense based on roadway dimensions is acceptable. Again, we get an idea of the construction process. You can dump the infill material in piles directly over the GeoWeb panels, then rake or use a dozer to push the material into the open cells to fill. And again, here's our completed access road. Next, a wind energy project in Germany using a combination of sand and aggregate infill from on-site sources. Large equipment was used to move the wind turbines, so this road had to be very durable. A typical wind turbine will require 50 concrete trucks, steel reinforcement, the tower itself, the blades, and the turbine accessing the site over the course of a few months. Axle loads are usually over 20,000 pounds. To handle these loads, 12 inches of sand was confined within the GeoWeb panels, which helped distribute the load and significantly reduce the vehicle stress seen by the native subgrade. Again, note that the geotextile was placed below the GeoWeb panels for separation. And here we can see the GeoWeb in action. Notice the ruts that are occurring where the cells are overfilled, but the rutting stops right at the top of the cells. This is exactly how the GeoWeb geocells are supposed to function. The overfill material is called a wearing surface and helps compact the material into the GeoWeb cells as it is driven on. Here we see the completed project with the wind turbines going up. You can see the large crane in the background for an idea of the types of vehicle this GeoWeb system can support. A solar farm in Brandywine, Maryland was developed at an abandoned quarry site, leading to some areas with very poor soil conditions. Vanguard Energy required a site access solution to allow for safe long-term access for maintenance and emergency vehicles. 
Well, traffic is infrequent, the roadway needed to support up to 70,000 pound fire trucks. For stormwater management reasons, they required a permeable roadway. Vanguard reached out to Presto Geosystems for a solution that could support the required loads while maintaining permeability. We recommended our GW30V6, which is the mid-sized cell six inches deep over a non-woven geotextile. In all, 39,000 square feet was installed and infilled with a mixture of on-site material, imported stone, and topsoil in order to build a vegetated roadway capable of supporting heavy vehicle loads. This mixture, which we refer to as engineered fill, was used to support long-term vegetation while still providing load support stability. If vegetation is not required or desired, a clean sand or clean crushed aggregate can be used as infill and still provide a permeable surface. One of the biggest questions we get is about cost, which isn't very surprising, especially if this is new technology for you. Having an idea of how much the GeoWeb system costs compared with other stabilization techniques is very important. So here we have a basic comparison for the GeoWeb system in a load support application. In this case, we have a gravel surface road. And this comparison shows the difference in both price and cross-section depth for an aggregate only unreinforced section, the section using geogrids and geotextiles, and then two sections showing the use of the GeoWeb system, one with aggregate and one with salvaged on site material as the infill. You can see the GeoWeb system is both thinner and less expensive than the other methods, significantly so when on site material is utilized. In fact, a 50% savings can be realized compared to the geogrid geotextile section, which does not allow for the use of most salvaged or on-site materials. Of course, your aggregate costs and distance to quarries may vary, but this will give you a general idea of the savings that can be achieved. Next, we'll briefly discuss the benefits of using GeoWeb at electrical substations. GeoWeb works quite well in these substations, locations which have some pretty specific requirements and need to need requirements and needs to help protect workers. Using an open graded base course is essential and easy to do with the GeoWeb system. And compared with an unreinforced system, there is very little maintenance required over time. The GeoWeb system allows for water drainage and doesn't need to be heavily compacted, so it is quick to install. For this project in Tampa, Florida, the GeoWeb system was used both as the access road to the site and the working platform around the transformers. The GeoWeb system allows for good water infiltration, so there is no ponding at the surface, which is a big safety hazard on electrical sites. As many energy projects need to deal with stormwater and potentially steep slopes, we'll now go over both channel and slope protection, beginning with channels. <clears throat> a typical section might have concrete or aggregate below the normal water level, depending on the flow characteristics. And many times we transition to topsoil and vegetation in the flood zone to provide as natural looking of a section as possible. The GeoWeb can be placed along the embankments of stormwater channels and ponds to help prevent erosion due to fluctuating water levels. Low flow situations are easily handled by vegetated GeoWeb systems, creating natural looking embankments without intensive maintenance requirements. The GeoWeb system does not need to cover the bottom of the channel if continuous low flow water is present. The type of vegetation within the GeoWeb panels is not, not important to the function of the system. So choosing plants that are native to the area and are okay with the occasional soaking will be a big help in reducing potential maintenance. The vegetated system has a lower cost, lower cost than a riprap line channel since you can use local topsoil and don't need to import large riprap aggregate. 
There's less maintenance as well, since riprap channels need constant inspection to replace lost stone and remove weeds. With the vegetated channel, the only maintenance is the occasional mowing, which can be done with your standard lawnmower, no special equipment required. And finally, vegetated channels have better aesthetics than riprap lined channels. It may not seem that way, but vegetated channels are actually a good solution for higher flows when stabilized with the GeoCell technology and a turf reinforcement mat or TRM overlay. The improvement is incredibly high, up to 29 feet per second compared to five to six feet per second with erosion blankets. This allows lower impact vegetated channels to be used instead of expensive high maintenance riprap, concrete, or articulated concrete blocks. One of the best things about the GeoWeb system is how much trust we have in the system working, and that is because we have the experience and research to back up what we are saying. Significant testing was done at Colorado State University in Fort Collins, and CSU is considered one of the top hydraulic research facilities in the world. The facility is unique in that it is located under the Horseshoe Reservoir and has a couple hundred feet of static head, therefore can achieve extremely high velocities and shear stresses in both their indoor and outdoor flumes. Vegetated infill testing was performed with two objectives in mind. The first was the ability to withstand high velocities and shear stresses main components you're going to think about in hydraulic situations. The second objective was that we wanted to compare the performance of topsoil filled GeoWeb versus riprap and other conventional solutions such as erosion blankets and turf reinforcement mats. The testing consisted of six inch deep GeoWeb panels filled with topsoil and covered with the TRM. Vegetation was established and grown to six inches to replicate typical field conditions. A total of 10 one-hour tests were performed in the outdoor flume with varying conditions, including flow rate and bed slope angle. Testing was done in accordance with ASTM D6460 standards, which covers both soil loss through scour and blade density. The ASTM standard considers a successful test when you have less than one half inch of topsoil loss and at least 300 blades of grass per square foot. The blade density is important as vegetation growth is a key factor in overall long-term stability. Vegetated channels hold up really well against even turbulent flows such as around corners or near rough terrain. Most people would think a vegetated channel cannot handle much water, but again, when properly confined in the GeoWeb system, along with surface protection, velocities of almost 30 feet per second and shear stresses of 16 pounds a square foot can be achieved. Here you can see one of the tests where the vegetated GeoWeb is actually under about six inches of water in the flume. Of course, there are lots of different types of grasses and choosing hardier varieties will improve these results while still blending in with the surrounding environment. Here's a quick comparison to show the impressive results. You can see that the GeoWeb filled with topsoil can handle a velocity over 29 feet per second compared to 12 inch riprap, which is around 14 feet per second. You can also see that GeoWeb and surface protection far, far outperforms a high performance TRM alone and doubles the acceptable velocity and shear stress. The key takeaway is topsoil filled GeoWeb provides two times the protection as 12 inch riprap. As an aside, we also tested the unvegetated condition and learned that GeoWeb improves the unvegetated performance of a TRM by 60%, so you get day one advantages in addition to long-term benefits. This solution is suitable for any situation where you have very high velocity but short duration flows. It allows you to maintain vegetation in areas that would previously have been concrete or very large riprap. 
We also tested aggregate channels, and for the aggregate tests, we tested all three cell sizes and two different rock sizes and ran a total of 90 tests. Due to all these data points, Colorado State was, be, it was able to perform a regression analysis and come up with this regression equation. So now given the bed slope and unit discharge of any channel, we can manipulate rock size and cell size until we get our rock loss to zero. When compared to traditional ripper wrap sizing tools by Abson Johnson and the Corps of Engineers, we find that GeoWeb channels can reduce your rock size anywhere from two to 10 times, offering significant cost savings. The large variance is due to bed slope, the flatter the bed slope, the more we can reduce the rock size. And finally, concrete filled channels. This particular project is a water conveyance channel in Colorado, and it used a geomembrane sandwiched between a non-woven geotextiles, our mid-sized cell three inches deep filled with 3,000 PSI concrete. Tendons were used for anchorage as we can't puncture the geomembrane. Studies by the US Bureau of Reclamation show that concrete filled geoweb is the most cost effective, low, lowest maintenance solution for water conveyance channels. <clears throat> Once geoweb is installed, it acts exactly like a concrete form. Here, the concrete is pumped into the cells but it can also be poured directly in from the concrete truck if access allows it. Then you simply screed and finish to the top of the cells. Notice the flexibility of the system. It won't crack like poured in place reinforced concrete will. <clears throat> and again, we had very impressive results for the concrete filled version of the system. It was able to withstand 36 feet per second and 21 pounds of shear without failure. So again, to summarize the benefits of using GeoWeb and channels is it will improve the hydraulic performance of whatever infill material you use. Uh, with vegetated infill, we'll also promote infiltration and reduce runoff. With aggregate, we allow for smaller, less expensive rock. And then with concrete, you don't need any other form or reinforcement. It will flex with subgrade deformation and minimize crack. Now our last GeoWeb application, which will be slope protection. And what GeoWeb will do is allow for steeper stabilized slopes that are resistant to erosion when compared to other methods. Um, we have one-to-one -one or greater on here. Really, if your slope is globally stable, we can design an anchorage system to hold the geoweb and the fill material onto that slope. Geoweb works in multiple ways to protect slope surfaces. It'll prevent significant movement of the soil by confining it to the individual cells. By separating the soil into smaller segments, the system resists mobilization of the entire slope face due to hydraulic loads and prevents soil erosion. It's important to emphasize that proper installation of the GeoWeb includes embedding the panels into the crest of the slope. This prevents water from flowing beneath the panels and undermining the system, and you'll have no rills, rills or gullies being formed beneath the GeoWeb, which could lead to failure. The system provides a way to fully vegetate slope surfaces that otherwise could not support sustainable plant life and increases the overall slope stability by interlocking with the vegetative root zone. Stone and concrete materials can also be confined within the GeoWeb panels, again on slopes that would normally be too steep to allow for natural stone. Vegetated slopes are the most popular option for slope protection because they can result in the most attractive slopes with little to no maintenance. As I just mentioned though, the GeoWeb system for slopes can be filled with several different materials depending on your project needs. Topsoil with vegetation is the most common, but sometimes vegetation is not appropriate, so stone and concrete are also options. 
There are a lot of different options for the cross section on a slope, depending on project details and needs. Different types of anchoring is available as briefly mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Our engineering evaluations can help determine the best system for your project needs so that you know you are getting something that works and not a one size fits all solution. So next we'll move on to a few project pro profiles in the energy sector for both slopes and channels. The sandy soil around the support structures for this pipeline were experiencing significant erosion due to wind and water flow. There was no vehicle access to many parts of this pipeline because the sandy soil just couldn't handle the loads. To both protect the support structures and allow pipeline maintenance access, the GeoWeb system filled with concrete was used. The system was fast and easy to install, even in a remote location. This was a project to replace a deteriorating asphalt cover on the berms at a liquid natural gas facility. They needed to reface the primary and secondary dikes without disturbing them so that the facility didn't have to shut down during construction. Different anchorage methods were needed because of the height difference between the primary and secondary containment areas. So the GeoWeb system was a great solution because it was able to be integrated into all necessary locations with minimal changes required. Here we have installation of the primary dike slope cover and completed a secondary dike in the foreground with primary in the background. The largest solar farm east of the Rockies at 3,500 acres, the Spotsylvania Solar Farm has hundreds of detention ponds to handle stormwater runoff. A two to one slope into one of the ponds at the back of the site was causing the owner particular problems as it had to be repaired several times using stone check dams, erosion control blankets, and turf reinforcement mats with nothing working due to the large volume of water the slope of the drainage area and the fact that there is a road right at the top of the damaged slope leading to high volumes and velocities. Eventually the GeoWeb slope protection system was chosen as a solution. The slope was smoothed out and the GeoWeb panels placed over the prepared slope using the tendon system for anchorage. Tendons were tied to a dead man pipe buried in a trench at the crest of the slope. The trench and geoweb panels were filled with locally available topsoil. The slope was then hydroceded and covered with a straw coconut blanket. Just two weeks after the install, after several high intensity storm events, there is significant vegetation established with no gullies or rills forming. While the GeoWeb system is not always the lowest cost solution available, it can solve the most challenging erosion protection issues. And think of the cost savings if this solution was done first and the slope didn't have to be redone four times. Power company in West Virginia came to us with significant erosion on the hillsides near three of their transmission towers. Slopes varied from 1.2 to 2.1. 1.2 to 1 to 2 to 1. This particular tower had 2 to 1 slopes up to 55 feet vertical. Our recommendation was to use our mid-sized cell six inches deep and anchor with three polypropylene tendons and an atra tendon clip every six cell down slope. The panels were pre-assembled off slope for ease of construction and the slope was then graded as smooth as possible. Pre-assembled panels were, were then pulled down the slope with pre-assembly. The only on-slope work is connecting adjoining sections side to side. The cells were then filled and hydroceded. And just nine days after hydroceding, we see vegetation beginning to take hold, which in combination with the GeoWeb, GeoWeb will prevent erosion, ensuring the long-term stability of the towers. 
We'll finish with a brief discussion of our reusable lightweight GeoTerra construction mats. When you need access quickly for a temporary solution, our construction mats are the way to go. They are intended to be placed directly on top of the existing grade, generally, generally with a geotextile separation layer placed first and don't need any infill material. The mats can support both tracked and wheeled equipment and vehicles. Testing from the University of Kansas shows that they are structurally equivalent to 12 inches of aggregate, offering significant savings in both placement and removal, as well as reducing the overall carbon footprint of the project. With both versions of GeoTerra Classic and GeoTerra GTO, we recommend different laying patterns based on direction of traffic. Generally speaking, we want to create a layout that avoids long continuous seams. This is true of both the bricklayer and herringbone patterns with the bricklayer suitable for unidirectional traffic and the herringbone for multi-directional. The side-by-side -side laying pattern can be considered for relatively, relatively lightweight and or very short-term installations. Depending on what we are trying to accomplish, several different geosynthetics can be incorporated into the cross section. Designs one and two are used to prevent rutting, protect turf, over sand, and or to create a uniform stable surface. For these designs, we add the geotextile separation layer if we are worried about subgrade pumping. Design three is used over poor wet soils to prevent rutting and subgrade degradation or contamination and to create a uniform stable surface. A geomembrane is added to prevent subgrade degradation and contamination and is typically sandwiched between two geotextiles to prevent damage. Design four is suitable over poor wet soils to prevent rutting and to create a uniform stable surface with the GeoNet incorporated to create an integrated drainable layer. Finally, design five pretty much does it all, being suitable over poor wet soils to prevent rutting, create a uniform stable surface, prevent subgrade degradation and contamination with a geomembrane, and creating an integrated drainable surface with the addition of a GeoNet. Now we'll look at each product a little bit more closely. Uh, we'll start out with GeoTerra GTO, which uses a plastic bolt connection method, making installation relatively fast. Here's some of the specifications. Uh, they are relatively small to start out with, at uh, 4.33 square feet per panel. But once you can connect the sections together, you can leave them in uh, much larger areas. Again, the units are locked together with bolts to form a network of interconnected structural mats. And we can typically install about 150 square feet a man hour using a cordless drill. Next, we have our GeoTerra, which is one of the lowest cost, if not the lowest cost structural mat on the market today. Again, some specifications. They're a little bit larger than the uh, GeoTerra GTO at nearly five square feet each and weigh just nine pounds. While the crush strength is less than the 550 PSI of GeoTerra GTO at 420, it is still nearly four times the loads applied in HS25 loading. And again, Kansas University testing also showed that the GeoTerra is structurally equivalent to 12 inches of egg. Individual units are locked together with a two-piece padlock connection device to form a network of interconnected structural mats. The padlock allows for pre-assembling larger mats either on or off-site to provide efficient transportation and installation. And with the classic GeoTerra, we have installation rates of about 100 square feet per man hour. But again, these can then be left in much larger mats and just stacked at a, uh, in a yard for quick and easy use the second time. The GeoTerra weighs only two pounds per square foot, while the GTO comes in at about three pounds a square foot, so significantly lighter than any other construction mats. 
And we'll finish up with a couple of project profiles using our, our construction maps. The GeoTerra maps were used to access many of the non-paved areas of this gas refinery site in Brazil. Equipment storage was moved around as needed, so the temporary and reusable nature of the GeoTerra mats was key. The mats provided a place to keep equipment high and dry out of the wet clay subgrade, and it made it much easier for the workers to move around as well. They also use GeoTerra to construct helipads to fly material and personnel in and out of the project site. The mats can be painted with signage as needed and then cleaned if reused at another location. The mats can also be used in wet environments as well. This project needed a solution for quick access over soft ground. The water moved through the mats as needed without compromising the integrity of the system for the vehicles. Mats are typically placed over enhanced geotextiles, especially over soft ground like we see here. The geotextile helps provide a little bit of extra strength to the system and prevents the mats from sinking into the subgrade. They're lightweight and easy to move. One trick to help keep things moving is to pre-assemble mats into sections that can fit on a truck for quick and easy deployment. As mentioned a few times, we provide a complete solution and part of that is our technical assistance. The engineering team here at Presto Geosystems works closely with landscape designers and engineers, offering free project evaluations for any roads, embankments, or erosion control project. The form is on our website, which again is prestogeo.com. You can fill it out with as much information that as you have, including attaching documents such as geotechnical reports, and it will come to us. And within three business days, but usually faster, we provide a complete design evaluation, including infill recommendations, anchorage requirements, and design calculations. We will work with you to get you the best solution for your project. I would also like to introduce a new web-based software Presto Geo P3, where you can plan projects yourself within this portal. This software offers a suite of geotechnical calculation tools designed to support engineers, contractors, and project owners in completing value engineering evaluations using GeoWeb GeoCells and our porous pavements. Check out the software at prestogeop3.com. We deliver quality and over 40 years of ex expertise, guaranteeing each shipment meets or exceeds our specs so you can deliver certainty and build with materials you can trust. We've made it faster and easier for you to obtain your PDH certificates. With our webinar dashboard, you can easily view our library of webinars and download PDH certificates for on-demand webinars completed. Your webinar dashboard will keep a record of on-demand webinars along with PDHs earned. Please note that certificates for live webinars are managed separately from the on-demand webinar dashboard, so you won't find your certificate from today in there, but you will receive an email from GoToWebinar within the next 24 hours containing a download link to obtain your PDH certificate. In two to three days, you will also receive a separate email from Presto Geosystems with more information about accessing the on-demand webinar dashboard and with other helpful resources. If you do not receive either of the previously mentioned emails, please check your spam folder. So again, here's my contact info. If there's any questions that uh, come up later, but uh, right now I'll take a look at the questions that have been submitted during the webinar. Starting at the earliest ones, uh, during strong storms, does the GeoWeb allow for quick drainage to avoid flooding in roadways? Uh, yeah, as long as you infill it with a clean stone, um, but it will also depend 
what your subgrade is like. Um, obviously, the more drainable your subgrade is, the faster the water will leave the roadway. Uh, square foot material prices, we can't really give. Um, as I mentioned, we have three cell sizes, five cell depths, so there's just too much variety. Um, if you have a specific application and you'd like to uh, email me about it, I can get you a ballpark price though. Is this product being used in roadway construction to reduce pavement thickness, thus reducing costs? Uh, yes, it is. Um, probably not as much as it should be, but um, it definitely has been used in base stabilization to reduce both base depth and pavement depth. Let's see, when using geolab with gravel infill for roads, what is the recommended cover thickness above the cells? Um, yeah, I mean, if it's gonna be a low water crossing where there's flow, you probably don't need to overfill it at all, but just make sure that um, it gets checked on periodically and that the cells are completely full. That's about the only maintenance that would be needed. And yes, sorry about the uh, dog barking that you heard. <laughs> Final one here says, I live on a creek and had erosion. The creek rises eight to 10 feet. Can this replace a riprap solution? Uh, yes, it can. If you want to uh, get a solution recommendation, you can fill out that uh, project evaluation form at prestogeo.com and we can get you some pricing on that immediately. All right, that looks to be all of the questions and we're pretty much at one hour here. So thanks everyone for attending. Feel free to uh, email me directly at corey.schneider at prestogeo.com with any other questions.